Do you want to learn how to safely buy and securely store your Bitcoins? Coin Compass is running a free two-hour webinar on Sunday, the 19th of April. For session times and a register, go to coincompass.com forward slash webinar. You can certainly do that at the ATM, but you're paying a fairly big premium and there are better ways to buy Bitcoin than doing it at the ATM. So I actually think ATMs, their days, Bitcoin ATMs, their days are numbered. And I think things like uh, Bitcoin debit cards, where you load a certain amount of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies onto a debit card. As far mm. as a merchant's concerned, you can actually use that card wherever you can use MasterCard, Visa or UnionPay. And they don't even know they're using a Bitcoin card anyway. Yeah. So I think that's probably going to become uh, the way that people do things in the future. This is the Bitcoin Basics Podcast with your host Ferris, that's me, and Gordon from CoinCompass.com. We're Bitcoin advisors and educators supporting business and individual investors to safely buy, store, and control their private keys, Bitcoins. This podcast is strictly educational and is not intended to be financial, investment, or legal advice. Full disclaimer in the show notes and at the end of this episode. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time you may be. This is day six of 30 Days of Bitcoin with your host, Ferris, that's me, and Gordon from Coin Compass. Now, we are at 8.07 at Greenwich Mean Time, and we also give you the blockchain. Gordon's just given me what block we're at, but I've already forgotten it. Gordon, can you fill us in, please? <laughs> It is block number 623143, March 27th, and the current price of Bitcoin is 6714 according to Bitstamp. Great, and thank you for everyone joining in. What this 30 Days of Bitcoin about is we're basically asking anyone who wants to know anything about Bitcoin, you can submit a question to coincompass.com forward slash ask and submit a question and we will answer it. So we want to keep these episodes under 10 minutes and we want to keep them simple. So we're not going to get into technological, technical, or too much economic detail. It's simply the basics of Bitcoin, those questions you thought were too silly to ask, which are not too silly to ask. That's what we're here for. We're educators. So please submit your questions. We will answer them because if you have a question, most likely someone else has the exact same one. And Gordon and I are both um, experienced teachers and it's one of the things we used to do was know that there's a lot of questions out there people are afraid to ask. So Gordon, what's today's question? By the way, Faris, for you that means no chance and for me it means no rabbit holes. Today's question is about <laughs> ATMs. So let's hit the recording. I've seen Bitcoin ATMs around in stores and shops and some shops are even accepting Bitcoin as payment. Um, how does this work? If Bit like referring to Bitcoin ATM, I'm presuming the ATM uh, gen uh, gives you uh, the local currency in exchange of your Bitcoins. Who determines the currency rate and how, how does how does that rate reflect like how reliable Bitcoin is? All right, Gordon. So a few of our listeners, I'm presuming, would have seen Bitcoin ATMs lying around in some public areas. Um, tell us, what is a Bitcoin ATM? How does it work? So a Bitcoin ATM differs a little bit from a normal ATM, whereby you've usually got a bank account and you're withdrawing your local currency. So, for example, if you're in Europe, you are withdrawing euro from your ATM. With a Bitcoin ATM, it's kind of like a foreign exchange currency where you're putting in, for example, one currency and getting out another. So as you may imagine, you can deposit Bitcoin into an ATM and withdraw your local currency. So if you're in Singapore, you put in Bitcoin, you get out Singapore dollars. If you're in Australia, put in Bitcoin, you get out Australian dollars and so forth. And you can also go the other way around. So you can deposit your local currency. So for example, if I'm in Canada, I could uh, put in Canadian dollars into the ATM and get uh, Bitcoin out. I deposit local currency like Canadian dollars and that tops up my Bitcoin. Usually you can't do both from the same ATM. You're either withdrawing Bitcoins or depositing Bitcoins, not both, because there are several 
uh, issues around that. But all I could do is perhaps uh, go through an example of how I've used ATMs in the past. And I've actually been quite surprised. They're actually fairly simple and intuitive to use. So the Bitcoin ATM that I used was actually in Singapore. So I went up to the Bitcoin ATM, I selected withdraw cash because I have some Bitcoin and I want to get out local Singapore dollars, the local currency. Then in the second step, I choose, chose the amount that I wanted to withdraw. Let's say I want to get out uh, you know, uh, $500, Singapore dollars. And then three, what I have to do is I have to be able to send Bitcoin to the ATM. And the way that you do that is from something that's called a Bitcoin wallet, which is basically just software on your mobile phone. And so I've got Bitcoins on my mobile phone through this software called a Bitcoin wallet. And what I do is the ATM has already printed a receipt. And that receipt has the amount of Singapore dollars that I'm withdrawing. It had the amount of Bitcoin, for example, 0.05 Bitcoin. And it had a QR code. So what I did with my mobile phone, Bitcoin wallet, is I scanned that QR code, that receipt. And so my Bitcoin wallet knows where to send the Bitcoins to, which is the Bitcoin address at the ATM. I simply click send on the mobile wallet. And Bitcoin is not instantaneous. And we won't go down the rabbit hole of uh, anything like that. But it took around about five to 10 minutes for the Bitcoin ATM to receive that. Once it received that, it actually sent me an SMS with a separate code. I think from memory, it was a six digit code. And there are other people using the ATM as well. And then what I did is I went up to the ATM again and punched in that six digit code and out magically popped some uh, Singapore dollars. Stay informed with the state of Bitcoin and blockchain developments, news, and a comprehensive summary of price movements from technical and fundamental analysts with the Coin Corner monthly newsletter at coincompass.com forward slash newsletter. While you're there, check out all our social media, video guides, ebooks, and webinars at coincompass.com forward slash free. So, Faris, you've used uh, Bitcoin ATMs. Is that your experience or you've got something different to share? No, absolutely. I, um, yeah, it was a bit nervous to begin with when I first did it, but exactly. You just, um, very simple, it show you very clear instructions. Um, and yeah, it took about 10 minutes and you, yeah, you get a text when it says your, uh, funds are ready. So no, it was, um, very intuitive, as you say. Now, the question also asks about the currency rate and how that rate reflects how reliable Bitcoin is or how that's determined. Yeah, I really like this part of the question. Um, and it's actually a very easy comparison to make because when you think of currency, so if you're traveling around and you see this a lot in Asia, especially, is that you know, local merchants will sell you um, the local currency. So in Thailand, you know, you can buy Thai bots and they'll actually have, like petrol stations do, just their rate out the front of the shops. And the rate is never exactly the same. So it'll be a different rate everywhere you go. So you can shop for a better rate to, you know, exchange your US dollars or Australian dollars into Thai bot. Well, it's the same with Bitcoin ATMs. Um, the rate is determined by the ATM itself. Um, so if Bitcoin is trading at 6,600, they might um, sell them to you at more expensive rate than that because they'll make their money in the difference. That's how they operate. They don't charge fees like you know reg regular banks do. Um, they don't charge you a fee for opening an account. They don't charge you a monthly fee. They just make their money in the spread. So how reliable is Bitcoin? Well, everyone's doing it. So your regular bank does the exact same thing. So what is the spread you're talking about? Oh, thanks, Gordon. So a spread is the difference between what they're selling you and what you're buying from. So for example, um, like you said, with that Bitcoin ATM, I could sell my Bitcoins to the ATM for 6,500, but if I wanted to buy Bitcoins, it'd be 6,700. So that difference, that $200 difference is called the spread. So, and regular banks do this as well. Like the Australian dollar, you might see trading somewhere 
at 70 cents to the US dollar, but the bank's not going to sell it to you at 70 cents. They're going to sell it to you at 67 cents. And that's the spread. That's the difference that they make. But on top of that, a regular bank will charge you a lot more fees. So Bitcoin is very reliable because they don't charge you the fees, but there is still a spread involved as with other currencies. That could also explain why sometimes you might pay even 10% more on your Bitcoin uh, withdrawing, uh, sorry, local currency from a Bitcoin ATM, especially in countries that aren't really that popular with Bitcoin yet or have any Bitcoin sort of exchanges because you are paying a really big spread because it's not like Bitcoin US dollar, it's Bitcoin, I don't know, um, South African Rand or something like that. It's not as liquid as some of the other currency pairs. Yeah, so Bitcoin ATM adoption has actually been very slow. And I think the main reason for that is you, you only really withdraw your Bitcoin into cash if you need it for emergency purposes. I mean, the reason I did it was just as a review for our business because we're educators and we want to try and test things to educate people how to do it. I didn't want to withdraw my Bitcoin. I actually went back and bought some from home. Um, but it was just as, as an experience. So I think people who tend to buy Bitcoin are really looking at it as a long-term investment. So with what Gordon just said, yeah, it can be expensive because the person who set up that ATM, they've got to buy the machine and they've got to pay rent for the machine that's sitting. And so they're not expecting that many transactions. So that's why they've got to charge a higher rate just to make up for their cost. Yeah, I think Bitcoin ATMs are actually going away because we're moving to a cashless society. So for me, when I'm traveling uh, in emergencies, like you probably, Faris, I uh, will sell Bitcoin into cash, local currency that I can use. But nowadays, I mean, everyone's sort of using uh, credit cards, debit cards and whatnot. So I'm not really sure that um, that use case will be around. However, the converse is that you put local currency and get out Bitcoin um, you can certainly do that at the ATM, but you're paying a fairly big premium and there are better ways to buy Bitcoin than doing it at the ATM. So I actually think ATMs, their days, Bitcoin ATMs, their days are numbered. And I think things like uh, Bitcoin debit cards, where you load a certain amount of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies onto a debit card. As far mm. as a merchant's concerned, you can actually use that card wherever you can use MasterCard, Visa or UnionPay. And they don't even know they're using a Bitcoin card anyway. Yeah. So I think that's probably going to become uh, the way that people do things in the future. I agree. Cool. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for listening in to another one of our 30 days of um, Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, remember, please uh, do submit your questions. And Gordon, tell them what else they can find at coincompass.com. Well, before I answer that question, the, there may be a question that people are wanting to ask or know about is where where can I find an ATM? Where is there an ATM near me? And there are actually two websites, coin radar, sorry, coinatmradar.com and bitcoinatmmap.com. They're the sort of the two prevalent ones. There are some other ones, but they're not really updated that frequently. But I find nowadays you could probably just jump on the Facebook and it seems like every country has got a Facebook page with listing of all the ATMs in that country. So that's probably a way that you can find an ATM closest, Bitcoin ATM, there are plenty of ATMs, Bitcoin ATM closest to you. At coincompass.com, you can find many free content, including newsletters, eBooks, video guides, this podcast, and a whole bunch of other things. And if you would be so kind to share this with your friends and family, and remember, it's not too late to ask a question in our 30 days of Bitcoin coincompass.com slash ask. Thanks for watching or listening. Please visit coincompass.com slash free to register to our socials and discover other free content. Subscribing, liking, and following helps this content remain ad-free. Until next time.